From the EXL Digital Studio, this is Smart Conversations with Nalan Miglani. Today, we will be talking about some really cool and cutting edge stuff. Natural language processing, NLP, and transfer learning. My challenge today is not to get intimidated by a series of experts that we have here today, and also try to understand all of what they're talking about in terms that you and I can easily relate to. We'll start with, the, on my extreme left, we have Shudipto. Shudipto works in our analytics practice and essentially in the retail and media sector. We have Gaurav, who is uh, an operations leader with a whole lot of experience, both in analytics and operations. We have Ashank. Ashank is again in our analytics practice and is right now in the banking and financial services sector. Especially bringing to you all the way from New York, on video we have joining us in real time and live is Nagendra Shishodhya. Nagendra is the head of our analytics products practice and in his team rests all the great knowledge about the various techniques that typically get called out as machine learning, AI, and all of the impressive stuff. So without any further waste of time, I will start this conversation, which I am sure you will find it not only educational, productive, but also, and you won't believe it, entertaining. So with that, I'm going to, Ashank, I'll start with you. NLP, there are a lot of things going on there. Talk to me about some of the interesting work that you're doing. Sure. So one of my projects is about augmented analytics. And augmented analytics is all about adding textual context to data discovery and visualization techniques. So for example, if I show you a graph, you will have to figure out what is the trend in that. What if it is an entire dashboard with multiple line charts, bar charts, and so on? And you have to spend all your time in figuring out what's going on there. If I add few simple sentences, that could tell you all about what's in that dashboard. It would save a lot of your time. That's the augmentation part of augmented analytics. That sounds impressive. And I am hoping that when I was studying economics, this was available. Because I could never interpret graphs. I was intimidated by econometrics. And if you had something like this, I could have just used your tool. And I would have had all the insights without making any effort. Is that right? That's kind of right. Yeah, instead of taking the help of your friends. <laughs> instead of taking help from my friends, well, they were not very helpful either <laughs> because of the same intellectual content as I am. Machine is going to be a better friend. <laughs> it is a bit faster than that. So that's about uh, documents, right? It's about diagrams, it's about numbers and interpreting them. Natural language processing is also about speech, right? And uh, how people speak, that's natural language and how do you process it. Shudipta, you've done some interesting work. You're do doing some projects in that area. Tell us briefly about that. Right. So we did a project on speech analytics where <clears throat> essentially what we were trying to do was to understand customer satisfaction or the satisfaction levels, right? Now, in traditional customer surveys, what has been observed is you know, the customers tend to be polite. And when they're getting back to you through a written medium, they usually do not express their right sentiments. So what we did instead, we took their conversation records from the call centers, and we took that uh, voice recordings, we turned them into text, and we ran a sentiment analysis on them. Sentiment analysis. You make it sound as if it's very impressive. My wife can do that in a second. Sure. She's sentiment analyzing me all the time. Right. So if your wife tells you, Nalan, you're amazing, what would you think? I would believe her at her face value. She's saying I'm amazing, then I am. Absolutely, and, and that's, that's like natural intelligence for us. But yes. you know, a machine will not know that. So a machine needs to be taught that amazing means really amazing. So, and that's how sentiment analytics work, where we try and feed in words and phrases which convey a certain sentiment, and then we help, uh, you know, we use classification to call out whether a certain customer is happy, not happy, or neutral. So you're saying that there is a lot of uh, nuance in language, for example, sarcasm. Somebody could be sarcastic saying you're amazing, yes. right? And uh, the machine can figure that out? No, you'll have to train the machine. To figure it out. Yes. OK, let's uh, turn to Nagendra, who's in our New York office. 
This seems like an interesting conundrum, Nagendra, that we want to process natural language, but it is full of nuances, such as sarcasm. Uh, how do you manage that? Yeah, so Nalin, uh, first of all, uh, sarcasm is a very, very difficult uh, task, even in natural language processing with all the advancement which has already happened. Right? Uh, for example, uh, let's say there's a statement, there's a comment, which is like, the I found the lecture to be so entertaining that I was able to make a fleet of paper boats. Now, when you are training the model, in most cases, if you just look at the first part of the uh, comment, you will think that it is actually enjoyable. But the machine doesn't know that making a fleet of paper boat means that you are getting bored, right? So you need to use sequence models like uh, LSTM, which is a deep learning technique, because it needs to look at a sequence of words, just presence or absence of one word, which is entertaining. <clears throat> is not going to tell you whether the person really found it to be entertaining or not. Right? So you need to use a sequence model, but then you need to provide a large number of sarcastic comments as well as uh, comments which were not sarcastic but were using similar kind of uh, uh, words and sequence of words and say, okay, these were not sarcastic. But uh, I mean, you can, you can try to develop those models, but as I said, it's an extremely difficult task even for machines to do after you have provided that this kind of uh, data set to train on. Sure, sure. I know we may have gone to one of the most sophisticated emotions, which is sarcasm. Like if you were in the UK, they'd tell you that, you know, this thing is very interesting. And if you're there for the first time, you'd think it's really interesting, but it would probably mean it's totally rubbish, right? So that's a lot of nuance there. But things like LSTM, through managing the sequence, what came before, what came after, you are able to develop a certain intelligence when in the future it is at least possible to differentiate between a real compliment and, you know, bad-tempered sarcasm. That's right. right. The presence and absence of certain words around that particular word, which is entertaining in this case, it will tell you whether entertaining was actually used in the right context or in a sarcastic manner. Sure, sure. So that's very useful. I have made many paper votes while listening to lectures which I told the professor were very interesting, right? So uh, we all made these paper boats. Uh, so Gaurav, sentiment analysis we are talking about in operations, where is it applied? So uh, sentiment analysis today is actually finding a lot of application in our customer contact operations, right? Uh, typically what has happened in the past is we've been able to only assess whether a customer is happy uh, after the conversation, right? But now uh, we have real-time sentiment analysis in the form of a smiley, uh, which our agents can see. The smiley starts off very happy because uh, you know you have a star which is happy, and then you see the smiley either be you know happy or sad or you know neutral, and that is able to tell our agents to change the conversation such that you know you either probe further or you address something to get a better outcome. Well, that sounds feels like a very uh, typical meeting with my boss. I start there, it starts happy, then the mood starts going downwards, and then I have to change my response to bring it back up, Yes. right? So that's what sentiment analysis is. I would just say that if you do have it with your boss, his expectation might get higher. <laughs> right, so yeah, maybe like the customer's expectations also keep going. But okay, got that, done that. Right. What value does it add? So the value is, you know, uh, I think threefold. One is happy customers give us more business. They renew more and they buy more products. Two is we have lower effort, lower cost, we run a much smoother operation, we get it right first time. And three is we have compliance to regulatory requirements. So how do we deal with complaints? How do we deal with vulnerable customers? We do it much better. Okay, then that's, that's real value. And think of it in large operations over large uh, value streams. This can really add up to a lot. It can add up. And you know, it can really drive the customer centricity that yes. every operation today strives for. Strives, strives for. Okay, so, uh, Right, we went from uh, augmented analytics to sentiment analysis. Back to you, Ashank. Uh, back to processing text and back to processing actual documents, which you were talking about. Now shift from diagrams and graphs. Are there any other applications? Sure, so the previous example uh, was predominantly about NLG, which is natural language generation. The other half of NLP is NLU, which is natural language understanding. So within this, uh, 
let's take the example of the legal industry, wherein lawyers typically charge hundreds of dollars an hour for analyzing thousands of documents for an important case, which might be coming in the next few days. Sometimes it's humanly impossible to sift through that amount of data. And that's where we can uh, augment this with NLP or NLU by creating a model which could analyze thousands of documents in a flash and summarize the most important parts in few sentences and give it certain topics which then could be read by lawyers to get the relevant stuff out. Okay, so uh, these lawyers used to have armies of people to boss around, which they won't have anymore, because the machine can learn it and help them point to the right direction quickly. Potentially. Yes, and uh, what I'm getting the feeling here, listening to all of you, is that a lot of jobs are there just to read and listen. Human beings are being paid to read and listen. With all this, that will change. And human beings will move to a higher level of activity, just like after it happened after the Industrial Revolution and people kept moving to higher and higher level of activity. Okay, so that sounds promising and not scary. Uh, Nagendra, uh, Ashang talked about legal documents. Uh, I know you worked on some medical documents and that was a very interesting piece of work. Can you quickly tell us about what the outcome or the work was there? As well as uh, what are some of the techniques that you used? Maybe the generative adversarial model that you used. Sure, Nalan. So just uh, to give context, I believe the client uh, received large number of uh, uh, medical documents which has uh, physician notes, as well as some semi-structured information about patient demographics. And there, there, there are hundreds of people who are doing this work manually. So what we were able to show to the client was that this can be done uh, using machine learning techniques, NLP techniques. And we use techniques like uh, LSTM, uh, conditional random fields, uh, uh, some regular expressions, a variety of techniques to process the test. But a uh, lot of these documents are actually scanned images, and the quality of those scans is not really good. So the, the team has developed a generative adversarial network model, which helps in improving the resolution of those scanned images, so that when you do OCR, the quality output is much better. So, so that's, that's how we are using GAN to improve resolution of uh, the document so that the quality is better. And on top of that, we can carry out the NLP task. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's clear. I mean, it's even clear to me. Seems like that uh, NLP can have the understanding part and the generation part. And the understanding part could have classification and all of that, but in the generation part, you're really starting to make some uh, you know, definitive either statements or conclusions or uh, insights. Gaurav, we talk legal, medical, anything in insurance? Yeah, so I think the best example is in our underwriting business, right? So uh, typically, uh, underwriters have had to deal with a lot of uh, different kinds of you know, documents data, right? So they've had scanned images, they have you know, financial statements, they have handwritten notes, uh, and it's typically taken an underwriter almost 80% of his time to actually go through all of these documents and then spend only 20% really assessing the risk, which is where we want them to spend time on. Uh, with the use of NLP, uh, I think uh, you know, we've almost cut that entire document uh, understanding, sifting part by about 60%. Uh, and, that, and what that has done is it's allowed the underwriters to, as you said before, Nalin, to elevate their work, to focus on how do they assess risk, how do they really use their 20, 25 years of experience to drive better outcomes for the business. Now, this is a great, the number is big, 60%. And I think that has been the story of human progress, right? That people move from doing repetitive things, things that add little value to bigger things, and then those things become of less value, and then you move to even bigger things. And today, here we are sitting, talking to somebody in New York and talking generative adversarial network models. That is the level of human progress, right? Back to speech. Shalipto, you talked about sentiment analysis, which uh, you know led to a whole lot of this discussion. Uh, what are the other interesting applications in speech analytics? Right. <clears throat> so one area that I can think of is in the medical transcription business. Right. Now, traditionally, doctors record the diagnosis and other patient information usually in a dictaphone, and then that conversation is sent to a person who then types it out. It's required for documentation. Right. 
Now, this entire activity, this entire process can be automated using machines and speech analytics. And there again, you're converting speech into text first? Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Because, you know, I was the other day, just the other day, in a legal uh, case. I was a witness. I mean, I was not involved in any way. I was an expert witness. I was supposed to give expert commentary on uh, some aspect of the case. And that was my first time. And what I noticed was at the end of the table, there was this lady with a funny-looking typewriter, not real, actually taking down every word I was saying. And I asked her at the end, and I said, did you take out every word? She said, every word. So now that may not be necessary. They could have just uh, recorded me and converted it into text. Exactly. Wow. One of the things that uh, Nagendra talked to me before this uh, conversation that we are having is that it's one thing to develop all these techniques to learn. But once you develop these, there is a notion of transfer learning, where with a certain base set of techniques and something else, you can propel the or you can shorten the time of outcomes quite dramatically. So, Nagin, can you tell us a little bit about what you mean by transfer learning? Sure, Nagin. So, as the name suggests, basically you are trying to uh, transfer some concepts, right, to develop new kind of machine learning models, right? So, when we talk about language transfer learning, really there are certain models which have been trained on large corpus of documents which may be totally unrelated to the task that you want to perform uh, at this point in time. Right? So it could be classification of sentiments, or it could be classification of emails. But the way uh, we read, the, the way humans read through the emails or any kind of document, there are certain linguistic patterns that they have learned over a period of time while looking at many other kind of documents. And they are able to make use of those patterns to uh, make a decision to classify, let's say, emails in a certain category. So transfer learning basically is trying to create those concepts uh, on a much bigger corpus of documents. And instead of you starting from scratch, you make use of those concepts and then just fine tune the application that you want to make. In this case, email classification or sentiment analysis. But that sounds really uh, powerful, Nagendra. It's uh, like saying that because you've already developed for legal, now if you want to translate all Jane Austen novels, you already have something and you just uh, tweak it at the edges and you can do it much faster than the person who first did it on the legal documents. That's exactly. In fact, one of the drawbacks of deep learning models is that you need large number of uh, training examples. But because of cross for learning, you will be able to reduce your training examples to just a few hundred or a few thousand. And you'll be able to use a lot of concepts, which you'll be able to uh, leverage through the cross for learning concept. So really, you'll be able to develop much better applications with much fewer data. So that actually, I mean, sounds like uh, very uh, impressive, but that has been the core idea of human progress, right? I mean, somebody saw George Stevenson, I think was the name, my uh, knowledge may be wary, but he saw that steam was putting the plate on the pan to go up and down and we realized that steam has force. And that idea was then used to make a steam engine and boilers and other things. And suddenly human progress exponentially multiplied by just that core idea with applications that uh, the tweak. That's the kind of notion you're talking about in transfer learning in the field of NLP and AI. Is that right? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great analogy. Uh, so they are reusable components that you have developed, and then you just fine-tune the final application. Yeah, I mean, again, states it so simply, but it is one of the more important concepts. So I think with that, uh, we will close this smart conversation, which is about NLP and uh, transfer learning realizing in it that there are not just applications in documents and speech which are useful in the insurance, medical, legal, and other industries, but that in fact we are sitting at the cusp of a breakthrough in human civilization with notions such as transfer learning and advancement towards AI. So I would like to thank uh, Shudipto, Gaurav, Ashank, and Nagendra all the way in New York uh, for joining us at this time. And with that, we will end this edition of Smart Conversations on NLP and Transfer Learning. I hope you enjoyed it, found it productive, and somewhat at least entertaining. Thank you very much.
That was today's Smart Conversation. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you have a great week. Smart Conversations is a co-production from Nan Miglani and our EXL communication team.